Do flexible shaft couplers eliminate resistance when imperfectly aligned shafts rotate, or do they just minimize it, and why? Okay, so let's go to a picture of a flexible shaft coupler. This one, correct? Mm hmm And does it minimize uh, resistance or eliminate it? Well, minimize it. And, and why? Um, because these two shafts probably are not aligned. That's why it's, it's being used. The, the, this is being used. Are, are you flipping the bird to my picture here? Is that what's happening? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they're probably not aligned. Therefore, there's going to be some force. And all those is going to be kind of flexing, moving a little bit. Um, it's not going to eliminate the resistance. That's exactly right. Yep, yep, that's right. Um, and then, let's see, the second one here. One might a designer prefer to use a rigid shaft coupler over a flexible shaft coupler? When you know for sure, to the most precise measurement, I suppose, that the two shafts are aligned. Concentric? Right. Yep, concentric. concentric, yeah. And, yep. Yeah, and, um, and that scenario, you... you that scenario is usually only valid when um, one of the two shafts can be allowed to float, so that 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 second shaft can can you know find concentricity with with the other one, and it is not externally constrained by by something else. So if you have two shafts that are constrained, can I draw? Um, I just see that. let's maybe just go. So, in these examples, uh, you have a shaft here and a shaft. Oh, come on! Uh, shaft here and a shaft here, and they're both constrained by something, right? This shaft is held in place by this block. It looks like maybe a, a gear housing or something, and then this shaft here is held in place by the motor. So they're both constrained. And there's, it's almost impossible to get two shafts that um, are, are already mounted to something else to be perfectly aligned with one, one another. Um, maybe let's take a little sidetrack here and say, why, why is that? Why would it be so difficult to get two constrained shafts to be perfectly aligned with one another? Because um, where they're coming from, the, the material that they're coming from, um, the motor and then this housing, it's already in place, so it would be hard, nearly impossible, right, to, to move these. Unless, for this one, for example, you put something underneath it, so it raises it, so it's equivalent and concentric. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting thing you just said. If you put something underneath it to raise it up and, and bring it into alignment, that's actually a technique that's used sometimes. Um, they're called shims. A shim is just a really, really thin piece of material uh, they come in different thicknesses, but you know, one thousandth of an inch or five thousandths of an inch, really, really thin, and they're used to just shift systems or, or components uh, in a very small amount in some direction. So you could use shims to to get uh, these into alignment, but if you think about how these are mounted, right? There's this motor here, which is probably mounted using screws onto the plate beneath it, and then this this. Uh, this housing here is also probably mounted using screws onto the plate beneath it. Screws are not like precision at all. There's probably, I don't know, five to ten thousandths of an inch of, of float in there. Uh, so that can translate to five to ten thousandths of an inch of displacement between those shafts. Um, and then there's just like manufacturing tolerances. You know, m maybe the manufacturer of this uh, housing here. Uh, only controls the like the, the the position of that shaft to uh, I don't know plus or minus a quarter of a degree and plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. Whereas this motor here, maybe the position of that shaft is much more tightly controlled, and so the two might not line up. Um, uh, so uh, whenever you have two shafts that are already constrained, it's almost impossible. Uh, especially if you're doing like really high volume applications. Low volume, yeah, you can put some shins in there and probably get it close enough, but 
if you're doing thousands of these things, you don't want to be messing with a bunch of shims to position your 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 shafts. Okay. Anything else? If we scroll up, I like a couple of definitions labeling yellow here. Let's keep scrolling up. Um, I'll scroll down actually now. Let's see. Keep going. Okay. So what I highlighted in yellow. If you could define each one. Okay. First one is motor shaft. Um, so here's a motor. And what is this, what is a motor? What's your definition of that? A motor is just um, something that that rotates. It produces movement. It produces yeah. rotational movement. Yeah. Okay. And coupler. A coupler. Um, a coupler is something that joins two parts together. It couples them together. Okay. Makes sense. Why well, it's called a shaft coupler now? Mm -hmm. And very precise ID OD tolerances. What is that? ID OD are, are very common terms and uh, used within mechanical design. Uh, they stand for uh, inner diameter and outer diameter. So, for example, uh, if if we're looking at a shaft, right, a rod, um, this right here is is the diameter, and because it's not hollow on the inside. There is only an outer diameter here. But if we were to draw something, let's see, get rid of that. If we were to draw something, um, let's say that we have a shaft like this, and, and we're going to look at this shaft from that direction. So now we're just looking at a circle. But let's say that this is this is a, a tube. It's a hollow tube, so we've got, you know, there's a, it's open in the middle. Uh, this diameter there, that is your ID, or internal diameter. And this diameter here is your OD, or um, outside diameter. Makes sense. Yeah, no further questions. Thank you. Okay. If you found this content helpful, Consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.